120 calves and we'll see how we get on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing else to do is there? Back at it again today. Just a little job on for this morning. Just BVD check testing a group of calves and we'll see how we get on. We are just doing a BVD check test. That's a blood test to see if a group of calves, these ones will be born spring 2020. Uh, to see if they have been exposed to a disease called BVD. So it's real straightforward, but I'm getting some footage because A, it's a really nice place, really lovely people, and these cars are something a bit different. They're part of a project that's a bit different. I can't find my keys. Hole. There we go. It's not your run-of-the-mill um, bee farm. Without further ado, let's get down there. Okay. I presume this one is a check. What are you thinking? Uh, I mean, this one should be. <laughs> That's my uh, veterinary powers of observation. As a. Uh, Cool, we got the number there. Right. Have you got that have you, guys? Yeah. <laughs> How do you tell if it's a girl or a boy from the back? Two holes or one? Two yeah. holes or one? <laughs> Try not to overthink it. Yeah, just on the back. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Nice and quiet. Michael, you done that because you just unsqueezed the cross ever so slightly. Oh, you just unsqueeze the crust oh, slightly, just slightly. There you go, it's a massive frame of mine. Let's yeah. <laughs> cross three up the bed. Hi John, how are you? Morning, Mary. Even if you're not a farmer, you've probably noticed these are somewhat unusual cattle. They are longhorns. This breed was developed by a farmer called Robert Bakewell in the 18th century. Bakewell is the godfather of selective breeding in livestock, so however ancient and archaic these animals may look, back in the 18th century, these represented the precision agriculture of their era. I've put a link to the Breed Society in the video description if you want to find out a bit more about them. They're distinct to the Texas Longhorns you might find in North America. And the Longhorn part brings me to this freeze frame. If I had to pick one bone with Bakewell, it's that he didn't breed these horns off them. Yes, they look magnificent out in the field, but they are particularly awkward to deal with using a modern cattle crush. Or oh, that's probably not something he had to worry about in the 1700s he probably would have had to change your name as well. Michael the stockman here has been very creative and has a self-described Heath Robertson setup 
for catching the cows and calves with longer horns. There are specific longhorn crushes you can get which accommodate these horns and that is in the works but like with everything it takes a bit of time. More recently the longhorns have been famed for the quality of their beef so if you're familiar with the Hawksmoor restaurants the founders are particularly fond of longhorn beef. Right, so we've just done the BVD check test, real simple job, and something a bit different today. Some of these cows have got, radio, what we call them, radio tracker no, collars? No, no, no. There. Uh, GPS tracker. GPS, and this is Richard, and you're from the University of Newcastle, That's is that right? right? Yes. Yep. So what, what position, are you like a lecturer, or? A, yeah. Cool. Uh, and so you've come to put these on today, and we talked a bit about it before, but what's, what are you looking to learn? It's simply sort of where the, the, the cattle go when they're released, yeah. uh, where they're going, and then in the future, yeah. where uh, where they've been and how they've changed the landscape. Yeah. So it's essentially, sort of at the moment, it's just sort of where the cattle are going. Yeah. So that, that the ideas tend to be that sort of cattle are sort of just random. Yeah. But when you actually look at their movements, they're not. They're going to very specific places, specific yeah. times, and like that. So what we'll do with the collars is, is is track them in real time uh, over the next year. Uh, uh -huh. that the collars will last, well, should last. You know, sort of fingers crossed. Anyway, yeah. by, uh, a year, year and a half before they need to be fingers uh, crossed. Uh, yeah, sort of battery batteries. For reference, there are some ponies up on the hill there, aren't there? And yes. how many did we put on? Uh, we put seven out. Um, uh, and we got one left. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the ponies are quite good at taking them off. Which is, I, I'm sure, like lots of pony owners, could relate to that. <laughs> yeah. Putting rugs on. Yeah, they help each other, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the ponies and well, at the moment are doing their thing. Yeah. But they're doing their thing because n there's there's no other animals there that are yeah. eating with them. We put the cattle into the mix as well. Then. Then it starts start being a lot more dynamic. You know, sort of there may be sort of uh, uh, that the, the horses may just sort of st stand their ground and say, "This is our bit." You know, sort of go away, and, and the cattle would then have to go into other sort of perhaps less profitable areas. Yeah, you know, sort of, yeah. Um, uh, 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 
and uh, and then that will start breaking up the landscape and uh, yeah, as Mary said, sort of be much more dynamic and uh, m much more heterogeneous as well. So yeah. there'll be little patches here, little patches there, or, and, and that will hopefully, in anyway, sort of uh, increase the, bi the overall biodiversity of the area, which is the ultimate goal. Sort of. So you can see, like, it's not a normal, or I, or I call it a not conventional farming project. So Mary, Mary's the queen. I don't know what your official <laughs> title is. Mary. <laughs> Mary's Mary's the foreman. I think is that your title? So Mary. Uh, you kind of coordinate, I guess, coordinate the project yeah, down here. Yeah, that's right. I'm just helping everyone sort of here at Heppel and doing a lot of the paperwork, but hopefully getting out and doing a lot of the on the ground work as well, especially on cool. the ecological monitoring side. Okay, that's where a lot of cool. My background comes from. Because these cows aren't put in a, you know, a small field, are they? They're on a big area yeah. at the moment. I mean, the long term, but at the moment, I mean, it's obviously been a very traditionally managed estate and mixture of you know, upland livestock beef and sheep and then there was a kind of grouse moor up on the hill and a bit of sort of semi-commercial forestry so the plan is to sort of integrate that and become a lot wilder i suppose the term wilding gets banded around yeah. a lot at the moment leaves a lot of different things to different people yeah um but the owners here are really keen for people to become a lot more biodiverse you know do our bit to sort of tackle yeah. the biodiversity climate crisis store more carbon have loads of lovely clean water and be economically sustainable and i guess everyone's looking at their land management practices and models so we yeah. want to be really extensive low input um and produce things that don't sort of degrade or detract yeah. from the environment so we're looking at reasons for getting these fantastic longhorns obviously a lot of people know herbivores have a key role to play in any ecological system causing that disturbance yeah. um dispersing things um you know knocking the vegetation back and creating a much more dynamic system hopefully which will increase the biodiversity um, and we've also got ponies doing that as well looking at other species yeah, um, yeah but the went into the longhorns we had quite a discussion about which breed the fantastically docile although there was one or two grumpy ones in there yeah. today um, but <laughs> you can yeah, forgive them are, for that yeah absolutely and yeah. hopefully some fantastic beef at the end of it yeah. which will so they'll stay outside totally um yeah going back to what you were saying before we've still got a lot of internal fencing yeah. but over the next few weeks months we'll rationalize that remove a lot of this and so yeah they will be roaming over a far more extensive area yeah. and potentially up on the moor where the exmoor ponies are as well yeah probably cool. maybe some pigs and other stuff throwing into the mix as well but that's where the tracking will hopefully come in when um it might be a little bit harder to to find, to them. find them and then we can yeah, do yeah. That research on that interaction between the habitats that richard was talking about yeah as well. something a bit different really mm. saving the world <laughs> <laughs> saving the world with longhorn cattle i can get on board with that yeah. cool thanks guys <laughs> that's brilliant sorry you're on candy <laughs> Because you're right, if it's on too tight, you might run into issues. But. I guess you can find them when they come off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you can see the, the collars are all colour coded. Find another one. Oh, oh there we go. So those cows will get pushed up to the hill, they're going up back to the hill now? Or they yeah, yeah. Get pushed up back to that hill which you can't see because <laughs> it's, it's covered in fog, but it, it, it exists. I've forgotten to film an outro again, but hopefully everyone found that interesting. As I said, it's something a bit different. And as Mary pointed out, the project is very much still in its infancy. So it'll be really cool to see how things 
develop down at Heppel. Who knows, we might even get one or two more videos as it progresses. Anyway, that's it for now. If you've watched this far, there's a little button just down here, I think. So give it a click and you won't miss any more videos. Thanks for watching.